everyone. So uh, today I have a very special guest for my uh, interview series. I have uh, Miss uh, Nina, and she's going. Uh, she's someone that I've really personally learned from in a couple of weeks back, and I would say that the program uh, has really changed uh, my life. So this is something that I'm very excited. A little nervous, uh, but I'm very excited to see what what a story uh, what her story can uh, bring for you today. All right. So thank you, Nina, for coming on to the interview. No yeah. yeah. So before we begin, right, we'd like to just share a bit about uh, your story and how do you get to where you are today and what what like a bit about what you're doing right now. Um, how I started doing trainings. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I attended the same trainings that you did mm. um, in December 99 in mm. KL yeah. and um, doing the trainings allowed me to see parts of myself that I yeah. couldn't see before mm. and I just did more and more and more and somewhere along the line I learned coaching and yeah. I also um, became trainer. I learned yeah. to become a trainer. Yeah, so the, I guess the question is because um, I personally know friends that they, they've always said they wanted to be a coach, they wanted to be a trainer, but they haven't made that jump and most of them are still stuck in that, that usual uh, like desk job. So uh, is that a similar story like at first like when you made the decision to be a coach, to be a trainer, was it something that was difficult for you or was it more no. of like it was just a, like let's do this? No, yeah. I, I decided. Okay, that's, that's uh, right there. Yeah. So, the like why why do you think like it was so easy for you to make that decision? Yeah. Um, because it opened a side of me that okay. I was um, I was quite blind to. I didn't I didn't see certain sides, and okay. I thought, you know, this is this is worth discovering. So I came from a very um, self self assured background of I know everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. To not not knowing very much mm. and uh, learning. Was, was fun. It was actually a, a fun process discovering different sides of me, different sides mm. of other people, yeah. how I see things. Um, I would say that um, I would say that I, I knew stuff yeah. but I didn't know that I knew it. Okay, so um, that awareness kind of... It, uh, <laughs> I think doing the trainings gave me the, um, the language okay. and um, Allowing me to to put my there's a there's a thought process there yep. is a there's a cause and effect there is a link um, there is joining the dots yep. you know um, it, before yep. I did self development work it was about um, I just do something and then we'll and see what yeah, yeah see what happens yep. and then deal with it but um, doing the trainings allowed me to see that yep. I. It, it sounds like a cliche, but yeah. I am captain of my own ship. Okay. I am the person who authors my, my life story. Yeah. I am responsible for what I create. Yeah. And and having that um, having that realization, for some people it's a burden, because yeah. then they have to be responsible yeah. and they have to be all careful. Yeah. But for me it was it was quite um, quite a relief. Okay, yeah. So I think one thing you shared, me thanks for sharing, but one thing you said that I think stood out a bit for me was you used the word fun mm -hmm. to describe your learning, right? So, because uh, at least from my experience when I um, speak to people about self-development, personal development, a lot of people tend to shy away from it. Uh, and like, fun? Yeah. Shy away from fun? Um, they, as in, they don't see self-development and learning as fun. So okay. like, do you have like any like stories or things like elaborate, elaborate a little bit more about what do you mean by um, fun for you? Yeah. Well, I have a sense of humor, so okay. <laughs> that, that helps. Yeah. Um, I find that people who are uh, struggling with self-development mm. usually take, take themselves too seriously. Ah, okay. So there's mm. this pride or ego mm. or um, this whole, I, I cannot be seen as making mistakes, I cannot mm. be seen as weak, yeah. um, so I have to know everything and I have to be um, the one with all the answers, okay. and they take themselves very seriously. And yeah. when they do that, um, they're too busy being on guard to just mm. say, "Okay, you know, I, I, I love." Um, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I love um, the Britney Spears "Oops, I Did It Again" song. Oh, okay. Um, because of that, <laughs> yeah. it was just it was just an "Oops, I Did It Again." Mm. Um, I'm not a Britney fan, but it was, it was funny. Yeah. I could use I could use that mm. to laugh at myself. Okay. And it's okay to make mistakes. So in that way, uh, learning becomes fun. Yeah. Because who am I learning about? I'm learning about myself. Okay. I'm learning about about how many times I I it, it's gonna take me to 
to for something to sink in. Of, yeah. of course, some learning is is more painful. Yeah. But how how you stay in a, a, one of those positions is entirely up to you. Okay. Yeah. But the more the more you do it, the easier it gets, yeah, and the easier it gets, the funner it becomes. I'm not saying it's the same for everyone. Yeah, yeah. So it might not be like that level of fun for everyone, but definitely as it goes over time, it gets a bit easier to. So Mark, when I say fun, this is not entertaining. Yeah, yeah, I get this it. This is yeah. not go yeah. to the movies or the fun fair kind yeah. of fun. But if I am going to not have fun learning about myself, why do it at all? Yeah. So how so the question is like, you have people that they know that they want to change something in their lives. They might have a burden, or they know that they want to get to the next level. And a lot of them are hesitant to go for all this like what I call like self help programs because there's there's like a stigma to it. So yes. like, what might be your response to like some of these people that they do have that desire to change, but they are still pretty resistant to oh, do I really need that self development program to like go to the next level? You're right about stigma. Yeah. Um, saying that. Self-development, just the word self-development, um, says I'm not developed enough. Yeah. Mm. Um, Self-help says I need help. I need help, yeah. Um, self-awareness means, why are you going for a self-awareness program? Are you not aware? Mm. Um, and so, everything about this industry is you need help. Yeah. And if it is about you need help, uh, means you are helpless. And okay. It's just this whole, you know, downward spiral, yeah. and just, and a, a lot of it is just people afraid of how they would look mm. in the eyes of other people. Yeah. Um, where where I operate from, it's if this is something that you want, if this is something that you really want for yourself, um, try it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Okay. But if it does work the beneficiary would be you. Yeah. So, um, the question is not so much what advice would I give, the, the yeah. question I would have is how much do you want it? Ah, okay, so which really brings down to that level of desire, right? How much do you really just want to, let me just try and take the leap of faith to do something about my life because I know I want something to change whether is it mm. that new career that yeah, new amount of money be, and, and whatnot okay that, that, that's a great like that's, that's, a, that's a great sharing right so then moving on to the part where like then I'm sure you, like you, you probably know that a lot of like family members or the people around them might be the ones the reasons actually they, they, to pull them back okay so because I understand that some people because they are self-worth or they are always validated by what they, what other people see in them. Mm -hmm. So like how could they try to overcome some some these forms of uh, challenges? Yeah. That's that's kind of tough. Because, <laughs> yeah. um, di different families will have different responses. Yeah. And if my if my family member or my parents said to me, Don't do this because it's it's bad for you. Yeah. Um, I would listen to their concern. Okay. I wouldn't fight them. Yeah. I would listen and I would, I would, I would hear what the concern is, mm. because I I don't know what their fears are. Mm. It could be that my daughter might lose money. Yeah. My daughter might be um, taken in by. Um, a cult, my daughter might be um, hurt in some way or used or um, victimized in yeah. some way and if that is, if I'm hearing a concern and I can identify the concern then I would be able to address it. Mm. So okay, if you're worried that I am going to lose money, let's work on that, yeah. you know, the cost, um, this this is the amount, it's yeah. gonna, it's gonna cost me and if anyone comes around and says oh sign this form sign that form yeah. dad don't worry I won't do it okay. or if this is about okay in order for you to progress to the next level um, you have to give up this or that mm -hmm. and um, you know you have to renounce your religion or, or whatever it is that's that my parents are concerned mm -hmm. about I can promise to um, address that I can promise to be transparent, to, okay. to share, yeah. to say, 
I'm going to do this, I'll check in with you every night or I can check in with you every two days so that you can track my progress mm. and we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Um, but yeah, it's not a one size fits all. Okay, yeah, as in that of, obviously there will be multiple factors into play and... Yeah, and, and you know, everyone has their expectations and their history and their they hear information yeah. differently. Yeah. So, well, the other thing I would I would say is for the person who wants to do it, um, they might want to look at why their family members don't don't think too highly about what they want to do. Mm. So, I'm um, not not to disrespect yeah. family members, but from a responsible place, if I say to my mom, hey mom, I want to go, um, I want to go and do this course, and my mom reacts negatively, it could be about the course, mm -hmm. or it could be that I've done this so many times in the past, that my mom is looking at me and going, another one, mm -hmm. you're going to waste money again, mm -hmm. you're going to waste your time again, so I need to look in my history, and and figure out whether my mom or my dad's reaction has to do with how I yeah. have been handling yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, myself in the past, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so I think that sharing is like really about not fighting against their objections, you know, but really trying to find like find out like to seek the understanding why they feel a certain way and then you look to overcome it from that from that angle. Yeah, because yeah. the goal is to attend a training. Yeah, ultimately it's to, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's to attend a training because that Training, like we said earlier, is the pot the one that could potentially change your life. But if you don't join, then not nothing could could happen. Yeah. So if you're busy fighting your parents, then you're not. That's. <laughs> you're gonna be spending your energy fighting your parents. Yeah, which doesn't really help <laughs> any anyone. So then moving on to the question of like your, I just want to find out a bit more of your 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 time as a coach and a trainer right now, right? Like, so what is your vision of whatever you're doing now? Like, what is the one vision that you have of what you want to achieve? in your time and your career right now? That's big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big question. Um, my vision for myself or my vision for the world? Mm, how about both? <laughs> um, my vision for the world yeah. is just to have equality. That's one. Um, I always had this thing about um, if everyone had if everyone had a fair shake, if everyone had a fair chance to do stuff, um, they would make choices that benefit other people. Okay. I have I have faith in that. Okay. Um, but it's when they find themselves cornered mm. and they feel that they don't have the option, yeah. then they go inward and mm. then they they they'll try and keep as much yeah. of themselves. And then it is me against you yeah. versus everybody with at the same time. Yeah. And um, so I, I tell this during my trainings um, and this thing, this theory of critical mass mm. yeah. um, and how I explain it is always that whole um, a, a small percentage of people doing something can create a spontaneous movement in that direction. Um, so it's like watching a, a, a flock of birds, just one big cloud flying in one direction, and then you have 5% um, that turn and, and, and fly in a different direction, and spontaneously every single bird follows mm. suit. And it's like a, a, a ballet yeah. in the sky, and you, and you see it. Um, the people who, not people, the birds who, who lead this, they're, they're five, six percent of that entire movement. Yeah. So if five, six percent of people started becoming aware of, of what um, their impact is in the world, um, being, being able to listen to other people, and like what I was saying earlier about listening to the parents' concerns yeah. instead of just me, 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 yeah. Let me stop with the me and let me listen to you. Um, and if we did more of that, if more of us listened instead of 
spend so much energy just putting our own agendas yeah. forward, I think there is a bigger place, a uh, bigger platform for compromise to happen. Mm -hmm. It's a bigger platform for people to understand and and just be responsible for what it is they're creating. For myself, yeah. um, if that happened, um, I would I, I'd just be very, very proud to have played a role. So, so it of, of of course it links to your overall vision of the whole like achieving like playing a part in achieving yeah. that yeah and the one word when you were sharing right was I, I it, it was abundance I think it's the fact that you want like the world or the people to operate from a place of abundance right rather than always from a scarcity mindset and always trying to care for myself but how can I contribute how can I care for others at the same time while yeah. adding value to myself at the same time well if you think about that there are types of people in the world who like um, knowledge, yeah. so that they can have knowledge, yeah. and it's used as a weapon. I have more knowledge than you, yeah. um, but you can't take it anywhere. Yeah. Um, knowledge is useless if not shared. Yeah. Um, you know, wisdom. What's the point of wisdom if you don't share it? Yeah. What's the point of being wise alone? Yeah. <laughs> It's a, lot of, it's a very it's, lonely and <laughs> it's a lot of hard work if yeah. you are the only one who knows everything because mm. you're gonna have a million people asking you yeah. for the answer, asking you to, to give solutions or to solve this problem mm. and that problem. Versus saying, Okay, I know how to do this, let's share this mm. and Everyone can Jeez, solve your own problems. Yeah. Right. Stop yeah. coming to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I think it's very useful. So like a lot of people would think about like always keeping to themselves because they might get PM or not. But ultimately when you share it, you like the, the amount of like value you can give to others and the amount of value they can give to others from that knowledge gets amplified. You were talking yeah. about validation earlier on. Some people yeah. get validation from the amount of followers they have. Yep, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people. <laughs> and, and sometimes uh, that's the whole point. They want people to continue following. Mm -hmm. What happens when when that, that leader is gone? What happens mm -hmm. to the followers? So if you were if you were serious about having a movement, a self development, self awareness, um, you know, make the world a better place kind of movement, what what happens when the leader is gone and they're just a bunch of followers and there's no successor? Yeah. yeah, I think that's a very powerful point, right? Like, are you are you trying to build up? Like, mm -hmm. Are you trying to just get followers, or are you? I know are you I'm not talking up about just, your yeah. social media. No, followers. yeah, no, 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 <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> So I think I guess I just want to find one quick question before I go to my main one, right? Sure. Which is like, I mean, you have been a coach, a trainer for many, many years, right? And my it's, my my curiosity is, has there ever been a time when um you faced a challenge and you found that it was like almost impossible to overcome or like something that really like shook like your vision like shook your core of what you wanted to achieve and and through your journey thus far um i'm i'm not very sure what you're asking you're asking yeah. me if there was a point in time when i wanted to give up yeah 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 so um, i went around with that yeah i went there many times i wanted to give up um but they're just it's like how I want to give up every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> not, like, not, not give up on the dream. Mm. The laziness is something that is always going to be there. Yeah. Or uh, the, the conversation of oh, why I can't be bothered to do this again. It's mm. always going to be there. Um, but those are temporary. Yeah. The, the vision mm. or the goal is is so much bigger than the the conversations. So it's was there any point in time where I thought, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit. I'm not gonna do this anymore. Um, no, no. Never. Right? Like it was, yeah. it was it was your vision, and you it's something that keeps you. I don't want to give you a false impression that I was <laughs> this, you know, all in, yeah, yeah, yeah no, all right. in, and I mm. um, I took it in stride. Mm. I took it in stride and I thought about um, what I wanted to do and mm. and every step every step was a renewed commitment. Okay. So every every 
every hurdle, mm. um, I get to sit back and say, do I want to do this? Every every mile, every roadblock, every every obstacle, every even every win, okay. it is. You know, even when you win, you ask yourself, do I want to continue doing this? Mm. Um, and if the answer is yes, one thing my coach um, said to me, there were times when I looked up and I thought, can I do this for the next 10, 20 years? Yes. Do I want to do this for the next 10, 20 years? And she said to me, that is an impossible question to answer. Mm. Because if you think about it, if, if people had answers to that question, mm. and I'm talking very generally yeah. here, there wouldn't be divorces. Mm. Right? Yeah. People wouldn't break up if I know this is what I want to do, yeah. and you know I'm going to be married to this man for the next many years, or I'm going to I'm going to be in this job for the next Long twenty time. years yeah. um, until I retire. And there are people who do that, yeah. and there are people who something mm. new comes along, mm. and they go, I prefer this to that. Mm. They make a new commitment. But you know, you get people who are saying things like, "Oh no, I made a commitment. I'm going to stay with this company till mm. I die. It doesn't matter if the company's going up or down, yeah. or if they're going nowhere." Yeah. Um, saying in it and in it all the way is probably not something I am a fan of. Okay. But um, when she was when she she what she asked me was, "Can you?" Can you be committed for the next 12 months? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I went, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's get to work and do the work for the 12 months. Okay. And at the end of 12 months, we'll look up again and we'll say, can we do it for another 12 months? Okay. And then another 12 months. Sooner or later, you're going to hit your 20 years without even realizing. Yeah. But you're not, you're not so fearful or overwhelmed yeah. by the enormity of, wow, 20 years, yeah. 30 years, mm. versus, can I do this for six months? Absolutely. Mm. So, okay, six months, mm. for sure I can do. Let me, let me do everything I can in six months, because I would look at it from a place of, I don't have that much time. Mm. Versus, I have twenty years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then you can get like slow down and whatnot. Oh, yeah, I have time. Yeah. Um, or I can look at it and go, oh my God, it's going to be the same thing every day for twenty years, and I lose interest. Yeah. But so it's tricky with mine. Mm. But at the end of the day, let's say at the end of twelve months, I look up and I say, I don't. I am not in love with this job anymore. Yeah. Can I? honestly say to myself, it is okay to move on. Mm. Or, as I'm doing this, and I love doing this, something new might come mm. along that is in the same vein, mm. but not necessarily the same. Mm. So, if I give you an example, um, the coaching school that we run here in Singapore, after doing, um, if we do an ontological coaching, um, my my ex boss, my, my ex mentor, came up with health coaching. Mm. It's still coaching, but it's specialized, yeah. and it evolves. So mm. after that, you could do something else, yeah. and you could do something else. But when you are having fun doing one thing, yeah. you'll find that it opens the doors to other things. Okay. See the word yeah. fun comes. Yeah, up the again. fun comes up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it comes one circle. So, uh, one, so I guess it's really about perspective, right? Like rather than overwhelming yourself with that big vision, you chunk it down like six, six months, twelve months, and over time, because whatever you do is to link with that whole big vision, but you don't think of it of a twenty year runway, which is I feel is very powerful, like to, be, to make sure that people don't get overwhelmed and complacent. Uh, well, if you're coaching someone lose weight, yeah. and they have to lose. You know, if they're obese and they have to lose 50 yeah. kilos, yeah. you don't say to them, well, when are you going to lose 50 kilos? Yeah. When are you going to lose 50 kilos? You say, yeah. you say, when are you going to lose your first 500 grams? And when you get that done, okay, the next 500 grams, yeah. the next one. 500 grams I can do, 50 kilos might be a little bit daunting, yeah. right? Step at a time. And, and I'm always going to be comparing.
comparing to the big goal, I'm, I'm only at 1%, I'm only at 2%. But if my goal is 1 kilo, 500 grams is 50%. Yeah. A different uh, yeah. perspective with chicken and brain. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thanks for sharing. So then I, I think it comes down to like the my favorite question, right? Which is I mean like uh, so many favorite questions you have. Uh, this is one my favorite, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean you have been um, coaching, you have been training for the past how many how many years? 18-19 years. 19 years. So approximately how many students do you think you have taught oh, in total? Oh. <laughs> uh, wow. I would personally have worked with, I don't know, it doesn't sound like a lot, or it doesn't, I don't know if it's a lot or not, and I have no idea if I have the right figure, <laughs> no, I, would right, say, does I would say three to four thousand. No, that's, that's, a, that's a big big number, right, and um, so I'm going to like, your... as in personally, work, personally, yeah. Over, yeah, so because my question is, um, I mean, you have worked with so many students, right? And I'm sure you might have um, followed up some of them or you might know some of their progress. So the question is, people can attend the same course, the same yeah. seminar and whatnot, but they can achieve drastically different results, right? So mm -hmm. based on your own personal observations, right, what explains the differences between a student that is really like, after the course, after the program, they just accelerate the results that they want versus those that might still not be at, might still be a bit stuck or still moving a little slower than they would want to? I would say that it is the same as going to the gym. Okay. There are people who go to the gym and lose weight rapidly and build muscle tone and continue with the program and get coaching from their, their um, personal trainers. Mm. And they invest in more and more, um, I don't know, any anything that would support them um, continue to grow that that muscle or yeah. that new new um, talent or yeah. or yeah the muscle that they have and there are some people who pay the same membership yeah. get the same card um, buy all the great Lululemon outfits <laughs> yeah. and um, which are great and just hang out by the juice bar. And don't do the work. Um, people who don't do the work don't see results. Yeah. Or they would need an external um, stimulus mm. to to get them going. Um, you know, like boot camp. Yeah. So there is no drill sergeant. Someone screaming at. Yeah, yeah. they're not going to do it. Yeah. Um, some people love it, and some people continue to to do it because they see the benefits. Um, and some people go, well, drill sergeant's not here, I can relax. Yeah. Um, what causes or what drives some people to succeed and others see some success but give up after, yeah. um, at the end of the day, it comes down to whether they want it or not. Okay. If and we talked about this earlier, if someone wants change bad enough or if they want to do something with their lives and they want to achieve something, they, they get it done. They'll find the time, they will, um, they will admit to people their, their, their weaknesses yeah. and they're quite happy to speak about their strengths. But more importantly, they're, they're, uh, they are fine to be vulnerable to say, I don't know how, please teach me. And as soon as you're willing to say that, you will find a lot of teachers. Mm. You'll find a lot of people wanting to support. Um, <clears throat> so I was, you, you know, I was talking to a group earlier this evening, yeah. and I reminded them that um, achieving your goals or achieving something that you say you're committed yeah. to is never a question of capability. It's always mm. a question of willingness. And I speak in, in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even if I was interested in becoming a brain surgeon, I can't do it overnight, yeah. no matter how willing I am. <laughs> um, capability <laughs> creates a huge difference there. Um, but if I, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm looking at learning a, a foreign language, yeah. um, I will find the time. Mm. If I'm, if I, if it's really important to me, if I want to do it, I will find the time. I will find the teacher. Yeah. 
I will find the discipline. Um, but if I didn't really want to do it, if it was just a nice to have, and nice yeah. to have, like yeah. I buy one of these audio tapes and I wear it in my sleep, yeah. and it starts running on in my sleep, and I hope to absorb <laughs> <laughs> through sleep. You know, yeah. wake up in the morning speaking fluent French. That, yeah. That's a fantasy. Um, I need to be willing to do whatever it takes to to put on yeah. the white belt to sound like an idiot for the mm. first few months mm. or years yeah. while I practice and get the pronunciation mm. right and, and learn yeah. the language and and I would be it would be even worse than an infant because yeah. you know it's you have you're there an adult with your pride yeah. and you have to humble it. yourself you've got to humble yeah. yourself and you've got to say I, I want this bad enough to humble myself okay. to learn yeah. um, I go to a, a course, I've got to humble myself to, to understand that this person is here to teach me something, not because they are, um, they're going to benefit from my learning, but I am going to benefit from my learning. Okay. Yeah, so I guess based on what you shared, right, is I I see three key things. I think firstly, uh, is what you talked about accountability, mm -hmm. getting like your drill sergeant to really hone in on making yeah. sure they do your work. Uh, second one, then I I we should, we should just shared about which is about am I being open to learning in the first place, right? Like even when I go for the course, am I just having a blocked mind? And if you just think that I know what you're saying already, and you just do it all over again, you're not going to learn anything. And then I think thirdly then, which I find is a bit, uh, something I'm just a bit deeper on, right? Which is we talk about desire. Uh, and so how, because I know a lot of people that say, oh yes, I do want that. I do want that six pack body. I do want that. But how do you increase that level of desire to the point where it becomes compelling? Do you, find, do you think that's possible? And so like, how can you try to increase that level of desire in the first place? Yeah. I can't. Okay. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a coach or as a trainer, I can't mm. increase your yeah. level of compelling desire. I can't. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, you're familiar with Kelly Poulos' work. Um, so... I can ask questions mm. that can identify whether it's something that drives you or not, mm. whether it's a want or yes, it's, I'm, I really <laughs> am committed to this, mm. or I just, yeah, it would be nice to have. If it fell up, it fell from the sky onto my lap, mm. I would love to have it. Yeah. Um, so is, is it something that... Um, it, so if you remember the, the training I did with you, the question I always asked was what are you committed to create yep. and what are the prices you're willing to pay? Yep. If you're unwilling to pay those prices, where is your level of commitment? Mm -hmm. if, I, if I say yes, I want this, but, or I want yeah. this, um, provided that, if I want, I, I want this if someone yeah. da 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 so it's like saying I'll say I love you if you say I love you first yeah. no, no one says I love you yeah. I'll say I'm sorry if that person says I'm sorry first mm. then how sorry are you? yeah it's conditional you've gotta, it's, it's conditional yeah. so for as long as something is conditional it's <clears throat> how much do you want it? Mm. Uh, do you, are you more are you more attached to this declaration? Or are you more attached to the conditions that yeah. might get in the way? So you gotta ask yourself that. So question. asking questions. So we so like coaches and training, we can't really help you to increase your desire, but we can ask you questions to find out if you really want that goal that you want to achieve so or not. Yeah. If I if I tell you if I give you an example about um, someone I was working with yeah. um, said that she was gonna lose weight. Yep. Yeah. And so we did you know, I was I was quite a rookie coach at the time okay. and I was asking her um, so how much weight do you want to lose yeah. she said five kilos so you know we worked it out so yeah. it was like um, a kilo every two weeks yeah. which is very doable yeah. um, what are you going to do and she gave me this list of things that she was going to do exercise um, yeah. what she was going to eat <laughs> yeah. um, and so I would check in with her yeah. every every week 
Okay. And how are you doing? How are you doing? There are other goals, mm. but this was one that stood out. And um, for every kilo she lost, mm. she gained two. And it was a pattern. It oh, was wow. a pattern okay. for she would lose one kilo, and then the next time I checked in with her, she would have gained back that one kilo and mm. another. Okay. Um, and this went on for a month and a half. Okay. Well, I say a kilo is she would she would lose five hundred and then she would gain one. Okay. You know yeah. that kind it's of thing. ratio. <laughs> and I asked her, "What's going on?" And and her action steps would be, "Oh, half an hour in the sauna." I'm like, "Half an hour in the sauna, so you're not going to lose you <laughs> yeah. five kilos. Yeah. You've got to put on some shoes and go jogging." Yeah. Um, or you've got to go to the gym, yeah. or you've got to do this. And half an hour in the sauna after going for um, a holiday is it's not, <laughs> not going to do it. Yeah. And, and so, but she kept saying, yeah, five, five kilos, yes, 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 she wanted to do it. But we finally got real, and she acknowledged that the goal was a look good goal. Everybody else was, was okay. having a a weight goal or a health and fitness goal and she didn't actually want to lose that weight and she was she loved her food okay. her husband her husband loved her being slightly chubby yes. that's more to hug I don't know um, and she was perfectly fine okay. the way she was and so I said why did you declare it yeah. <clears throat> she said because it was expected of me so in order to fit in, in order to conform, yeah. um, you know, either in the office yeah. or amongst friends, yeah. who are always going on diets, who are yeah. always looking at, complaining about their, their, their weight, yeah, yeah. so, you know, she just wanted to fit in. And I said, you know, you're, you're wasting your time and mine. Um, why don't you declare a goal that you're really excited yeah. about? And just stay healthy. If you're healthy, fine. You, know, you don't have to fit in anyone's um, ideal of what you should weigh or what yeah. you should look like. Um, and there are some people, again, weight example, that when I pushed, um, it wasn't weight, mm. it was fitting into clothes better. Okay, okay. you fit into clothes better, what does that mean? I look better. Yeah. I look better means what? I look better means I feel confident. Yeah. I feel confident means I can attract someone. And if I can attract someone, I might have a partner yeah. and I won't be lonely. Um, and I could get married. Yeah. Like, okay, is the, goal to, yeah. is the goal to lose weight yeah. or is the goal to find a, a life partner? Yeah. And then we go find a life partner. Now here's the thing. Could you find a life partner being exactly the same weight you are right now? Mm. Yes, I could. Yeah. What's the problem? Yeah, so yeah, logical. You could yeah. lose all this weight yeah. and still think that you are unattractive yeah. or undeserving mm. and not find my partner. Yeah. So let's work on the deserving part. Yeah. So yeah. that becomes a new goal. Yeah. So like the desire. So when questioning, sometimes it's about digging deeper. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, a lot of people when it come from goal is really because I would say that from your story and what I personally observe is that because everybody else is having it and that's why I want to have it yeah. at the same time. Alright, so then moving on to my last last question. Okay, uh, last favorite, right? yeah. No, not last favorite, last, last okay. question. Is, so out of your 19 years of training, speaking, right, like I, I would like, always like to ask my guests, like, what is your biggest regrets that you have? Not in terms of Oh, I have this regret, but I learned it, so I do have any regrets in life. But what do you think are some of your biggest regrets or biggest mistakes that you wish you could have done differently over this uh, past 19 years? Personally or professionally? Um, personally, yeah. Personally, um, I always regret time not spent with loved ones. Um, I, it's, not a, it's not a huge regret yeah. um, because I did spend time. But, you know, looking back, um, last year I bought um, a new car, um, and it was just like, <laughs> should have done this for mom um, when I had the time, you know. Yeah. And, um, but it was, it was just, 
People always think they have time. I always thought I have time. Um, personally, um, because I didn't want it enough. <laughs> so I, I don't know if it's a regret or just one of those nice to have. Uh, I know that had I started 10 years ago, yep. I would have mastered a third language by now or a fourth language. Mm. And then, you know, had I started yeah. then, I, yeah. had I yeah. done it then, um, and I think languages is a, a really incredible gift to have mm. if, you, if you can speak. Yeah. Um, any language, if you could speak. If I could speak Mandarin, I would, I would love it, yeah. but I'm not. It's easy, <laughs> easier to ask um, someone, what did she say? <laughs> but, oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. So personal would be self-development in those areas. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe that if, if I could do that, then I could reach a lot more people. Um, yeah, not too late. Not too late. Yeah, it's, it's still a long time. <laughs> long time ahead, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so uh, I guess that concludes our interview. But any like last words or anything I want to share is uh, just a parting thought uh, to my audience here. <laughs> um, I would say if 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 people wanted to go for something, yeah. um, to do it for their own reasons. Mm. You know, you talked about this external validation. Um, if you don't do it for your own reasons, yeah. it really doesn't mean anything. Mm. So even if you're doing something because your wife likes it, mm. or you're doing it for your mom, mm. um, choose to do it from, I'm doing it because oh. I I want to do it for my wife, or I want to do it for my mom, but I'm doing it. Yeah. Not, they made me. And it makes a huge difference. Um, and the other thing is, is learning to laugh at yourself. I think if you learn to laugh at yourself, the, the mistakes are not so painful. Yeah. Um, the lessons are not so hurtful. Yeah. And, and you're better off inviting people to laugh with you mm. than being afraid that people will laugh uh, at, at you. you. Yeah. So yeah. if you're the first person to laugh at yourself, and mm. I'm, not, I'm not talking about the fake um, mm. right. cover just up, that, yeah. I just, I, I, Brittany, mm. I did it again. <laughs> Oops, you know, what's, what's the harm? Yeah. I, think, I think people will be a lot happier. Okay, all right. So thank you so much for the interview. Right? Like I learned a lot myself, and I mean, like the program you attended. I think like you have someone that changed my life, and I just want to thank you for that. You're and, yeah, no, and also, and I hope you enjoyed this interview. Right, and we'll see you in the next interview series uh, for a master mentor. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.